In 2005, Lita, who was dating Matt Hardy at the time, bonded with Matt's best friend, Edge, while they were riding on the road together. At this time, Matt was actually home recovering from an injury. And one thing led to another and a secret affair blossomed between Edge and Lita behind Matt's back. The result of this affair, to put it bluntly, resulted in Edge becoming a first ballot Hall of Famer, Matt finding himself on the unemployment line, and Lita having her reputation tarnished forever. This is the story of wrestling's most infamous love triangle, a love triangle that brought us one of the most memorable segments of all time, that gave birth to a superstar, and that is the Rated R Superstar. Now let's reroute to the very beginning for a moment. Once upon a time, during the Attitude Era, the tag teams of Edge and Christian, the Hardys, and the Dudleys took over tag team wrestling and became household names, thanks to several ladder matches and, of course, the match they invented and made famous, the tables, ladders, and chairs match. The team's successes together led them to becoming close friends, particularly Edge and the Hardys. So when Lita asked Matt if Edge could join her on the road, hmm, maybe a red flag in hindsight, Matt was fine with it since that was his good friend. Soon enough, Lita became distant with Matt and didn't even get him gifts for Valentine's Day. Eventually, Matt found Lita's burner phone that contained messages and phone calls from Edge. Matt played the messages for Edge's wife and kicked Lita out of his house. This drama was half as good as what we saw on TV. The WWE and Vince McMahon decided to make a television angle out of it. And they had Edge and Matt engage in a personal feud. On top of that, Edge and Lita, they played out their relationship on TV, and Edge literally, again, I have to say this, literally became a first ballot Hall of Famer as a single superstar, thanks to this extremely transparent storyline. Yep, that's right. The man that was cheated on got fired, while his friend turned bitter enemy took his girl and became an icon in the process. Edge is the rated R superstar. He was given this nickname after fornicating with Lita on live TV in front of you, me, a seven-year-old wrestling gifts, and millions more. This was a highly successful segment, drawing a 5.2 rating. So to recap, Edge stole Matt Hardy's girl, fornicated her on live TV, and became one of the most lovable icons in WWE history, while Matt got fired. Now Matt did not stay fired for long. WWE just had to distance themselves from him for a short time due to his unprofessional actions online. Matt was venting to anyone that would listen, creating wacky videos of himself running over a post of Lita and speaking to a cardboard cutout of her. Things got real, though, when Matt began calling in to bite this and he began ripping into Edge and Lita. Supposedly, Matt calling into the show was unscripted. This proven to be true since Lita looked visibly uncomfortable during the show. Matt was clearly heartbroken and was asking Lita why she broke up with him and flushed six years down the drain. Really just some tough stuff to watch if you can ever find that uh, bite this footage. Lita got her karma and really she's the only one of the trio that is neither married or has children. So yeah, like I said, she got her karma, that's for sure. Let's focus for a moment on just how this changes Edge's career though. Edge made himself into a household name during the Attitude Era with his tag team successes, but by the time the Attitude Era was over, he was simply known as a tag team specialist. He had some intriguing undercard feuds with the likes of Eddie Guerrero and Kurt Angle from 02 to 04, but that was really it. The potential for stardom was clear, as WWE would use him more so than his counterpart Christian, and even with this high usage, Edge was still seen as somebody who would be a mid-card guy for life. That all changed as he along with Lita became the most captivating and despised heels in the company. The couple would make out with each other on their way to the ring, and man, they just would not just make out. They'd be sucking on each other's faces like they had vacuums for mouth. Edge was on live TV looking like a Dyson attacking a carpet. Granted, the way Edge went about becoming a standout performer was questionable. There was no denying that he was the most exciting part of Raw more times than not though. Lita entered a wildly popular storyline with Kane where they had a baby that was punt kicked by Snitsky. I get PTSD of hearing, it wasn't my fault, whenever Snitsky made his entrance. Like that was, oh man, what a storyline. Fans ate this storyline up and at some point they eventually called Lita a slut and they were chanting things like, you screwed Matt and we want Matt. This was a level of reality in wrestling, the likes that we had not seen since the Montreal Screwjob. Edge's meteoric rise on the heels of controversy can draw a little bit of comparison to the screw job and how Mr. McMahon leveraged that reality to become a huge star. I know it's not on the same level, but it's cut from the same cloth. Edge calmly talking about how Matt Hardy wished he'd die in a car accident was very chilling, and I liked when McMahon proclaimed that Brett screwed Brett. Again, not on the same scale, I'm fully aware. 
if the aforementioned infamous episode of Bite This had been a TV segment on Raw, I think it would be looked at in a similar light, though, to McMahon's interview. But since it was just a WWE.com show, it's looked at a little bit differently. The combination of realism and entertainment catapulted Edge all the way to the main event, though, when he won Money in the Bank in 2005. Yeah, Edge won Money in the Bank before becoming an on-screen couple with Lita, but it was his pairing with Lita that made him into a certified top guy. Edge eventually won the WWE title by cashing in his contract to defeat John Cena at New Year's Revolution 2006 in one of the most devastating moments of mine and a lot of your fandom in our childhood. As for Lita, her popularity declined rapidly along with her approval rating from the audience during this time frame. I already mentioned to you the vulgar chants that fans showered her with. She also received a lot of backstage heat from other wrestlers along with Edge as their actions had divided the locker room. Lita's personal choices and lack of dealing with her emotions led to her and Edge splitting and eventually was the catalyst for her early retirement from in-ring competition. And there's rumors out there that their relationship wasn't even that long. It was only like a couple of months, but I don't really know. Now, Lita was never viewed through the same lens by the wrestling community as she was prior to this incident, and she took most of the blame. I mean, rightfully so. Edge doesn't really owe Matt anything. It was on Lita to handle the breakup better and she had to live with what came of her actions. Nowadays, when Lita makes appearances on WWE TV, it is nice to see her and all, but for me, and I know a lot of us, it's just hard to get her out of that black cloud that was cast over her about a decade ago. She just doesn't feel as beloved as, say, a Trish Stratus or a Becky Lynch. As for Matt, I mean, he got married to a beautiful woman and has four children with her. He returned home to WWE in 2017 alongside his brother Jeff, after years on the independent circle and an infamous run as Broken Matt Hardy in TNA. Something you just had to be there for, though. The Hardys enjoyed a nice reunion tour in WWE before departing to AEW in 2020, where Matt is a coach and an on-screen performer. All three of these legends will be Hall of Famers one day, as Edge and Lita are already in, but it was Edge who was inducted as a surefire first ballot candidate that enjoyed the most success, while Matt struggled for years to get to where he is. The moral of the story is, sometimes nice guys really do finish last. 